April 2014, Ram Records announced a new artist called Bensley. He's from Canada, he's aged 19 at the time, and he's got no previous whatsoever. April 2015, they release his debut, a full artist album called Next Generation, a bold move from Ram and a beautiful move from Bensley. Fast forward to April 2019, he's just released his first single of his second album. The single's called Kilauea. It's named after a Hawaiian volcano, and the album's pretty explosive too. An adventurous piece of work, it crosses over lots of genre boundaries, and even includes Bensley on saxophone. The album's called Muskoka, it's out in July, and it's named after the Ontario region in which he grew up, and learned to do cool stuff like produce music, play the saxophone, and even wakeboard, which is why we're here at Wake Up Docklands London to see him enjoying a bit of his favorite pastime, and find out a bit more about the album too. Time to get woke. Cool, so this is quite an interesting one for you because the last time you were wakeboarding, you broke your ankle, right? Yeah, that was back home in Canada about August and I haven't done it since then. That sort of put an end to my season, but I brought you guys out here to sort of document the first time I'll be doing it since then. So hopefully that goes well. <laughs> no pressure then. So when did you get into wakeboarding and how often do you do it? It's been a regular sport and a hobby for you? I started it about 10 years ago at my family's cottage in Muskoka and uh, back then I was doing it behind a boat and wasn't very, it wasn't doing it very often and then I started taking it a bit more seriously four years ago when a park just like this one opened up. Right, so you mentioned Muskoka and that's the name of your second album so there's a sense of place there. This is a really personal piece of work isn't it? Yeah it is. Basically every time I go there it's just a fountain of inspiration for me and my music so I just I'll sit on the dock with my laptop and ideas just come out of me. Well the most obvious example I can think of is the title track Muskoka and that tune is heavily inspired by the surroundings. I've tried to inject lots of sounds of the lake and the atmosphere, the birds, everything that I, I experience when I'm up there and I feel like I've poured what that place means to me into that tune. That's amazing. Now, there's also another location title from the first single, which is Kilauea. Now, that is a Hawaiian volcano, which I think is pretty active at the moment, and it's erupting and stuff. Well, it's certainly in the news. So where's that? What's the story there? I wrote that one quite a while ago uh, on a trip to Hawaii. Like with the album tune, I'm obviously very inspired by my surroundings, so I tried to inject a lot of the island elements and, you know, sort of local inspired instruments and sounds uh, into that track in a way that also translates into the, the dance floor, which was uh, a personal challenge. That's amazing. That's really cool. The sense of place is really important. And I've spoken to other artists like Etherwood, who's made tracks in a van while he's gone around Europe in the van that he lives in and stuff. If you're just in the studio all of the time, you need that other side of your life, really, to get the other side of your brain working and inspire you, don't you? Yeah, if you if you stay in the studio all the time, it's going to sound like you're inspired by the studio. Or in, at least in my experience, nothing good comes out of being cooped up for too long. So getting out there, you know, getting some experiences that put you in a different frame of mind uh, all benefit you when you go back in the studio. What other influences then besides locations and stuff that we can hear? I mean, personally, I can hear quite a lot of kind of 80s sounds in there. So what other things have kind of inspired the creation of the album? Most of the other inspiration comes from what I'm listening to at the time, and a lot of that is like electronic music outside of drum and bass. So like you said, a lot of 80s stuff, like I try and uh, make that old distorted sound come out in my music, in the synths and the, the sounds I use. But if we're talking like specifically artists, there's like, I don't know, Flume, Fela, Jamie XX, Moderat, all those guys are sort of huge to me at the moment. So. Uh, I can hear that as well in the music, but what else I can hear is you playing the saxophone. So that was probably the first instrument that you learned, right, I think? Yeah, it's, it's probably one, one of the only instruments I can really uh, do. And I haven't picked it up quite as well since, since I left high school, but I, I try and get back into it every time I'm going to record something for a tune and, you know, try and belt it out. That must be quite tricky. I can't think of any other drum and bass artist who just cracks out a saxophone solo and makes it sound good as well. You know, there's a lot of saxophone samples in music and stuff, but I think that's a real challenge. It must have been really fun to do. Yeah, it's hard not to bring a sax into a song and have it not... Uh, seem cheesy or romantic and since that 
It's definitely not the vibe of my music that I'm going for. It's been a personal challenge to bring the sax in in the way that complements it, but I think I'm pulling it off all right so far. <laughs> definitely, man, definitely. It's really interesting because you came in in such a unique way and were introduced with a debut album. You're kind of always in an album mindset in that way, really, and this album, I feel kind of, whereas Next Generation set what you were, this is developing on it then. This is showing, this is zooming out and showing a wider picture. Yeah, I really tried to build upon what I had gone through with the first album and just sort of experiment and grow as an artist, but not lose the original sound uh, so that, you know, people who are into the first album will hopefully, there'll, there'll still be something for them on this one. And uh, But it was, you know, mostly for me to challenge myself and you know, explore new avenues with music. Definitely. It's got to be for you first and foremost. I think that's where fans can feel that then. So where did you feel you challenged yourself the most? There's a two-part track on the album called In Darkness, and that is sort of like the two parts together uh, accumulate to almost 10 minutes, I think. And the first bit is just like long and atmospheric, really synthy, sort of Blade Runner inspired. And then it leads into a second part that's a bit more uh, standard dance floor format. And... Uh, you know, committing to a journey that long was definitely intimidating, but it, it, I felt like it happened pretty naturally. And uh, once I had finished it, I felt like I'd sort of overcome a big challenge as an artist, which is, you know, making a track longer than four or five minutes, you know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So it's out in July. Um, that's the summer. You've got a whole load of festival dates and stuff like that. So I'm guessing you're going to be celebrating the album throughout the summer, really. Yeah, we're just sort of putting tour dates together at the moment. We've got some in Canada, some in the UK and Europe, and I'm just looking forward to a, a busy rest of the year. Hey, I'm Bensley. Check out my new album, Muskoka, and uh, you're watching DMB TV. Music